Hi, I'm Lynn Bridgeford from Aith Bios, and today in our series on mental health and coaching, we're going to be talking about compassion. What is it, and particularly self-compassion. Compassion literally means to suffer together, and it's the feeling that arises when we're confronted with another's suffering and we feel motivated or moved to do something to relieve their suffering. It's not the same as empathy and altruism, though they are related. Research has shown that when we feel compassion, our heart rate slows down and we secrete the bonding or neurotransmitter oxytocin. And areas of the brain linked to empathy, caregiving and pleasure light up and often result in somebody wanting to take care of other people. Researcher Kirsten Neff has done quite a study on compassion, in particular self-compassion, and has written a book about it and the benefits of going easy on ourselves give us less anxiety, less conflict and more peace of mind. With the amount of competitiveness in our society and particularly in social media, how well can we really feel about ourselves in this day and age? It's always important to take responsibility for ourselves and to acknowledge our weaknesses, to build our strengths, to be honest with ourselves about who we are, how we are and what we're doing. Having self-compassion isn't about just not caring, it's about caring deeply about ourselves. And perhaps when we have more self-compassion, we are likely to have more self-esteem and feel better about ourselves and realise that we're not perfect, we are human beings. Buddhists talk a lot about compassion and have the view that it's important to care about yourself to be able to care about other people. So in other words, to have compassion for yourself, to be able to have compassion for others. Neff defines self-compassion as having three core components. Self-kindness, recognition of our common humanity, and mindfulness. Self-kindness requires that we be gentle and understanding with ourselves, rather than being critical and judgmental. The recognition of common humanity is to see that we aren't alone, we are not alienated, we are part of a, a similar group of humans having similar experiences. The mindfulness is about having balanced awareness that when we have pain we don't exaggerate or ignore it, we face it. Self-compassion isn't about requiring us to be special or better than or above average. It comes from a caring about ourselves, caring about who and how, who we are, even though we are perhaps fragile, we are magnificent. Rather than comparing ourselves to others, it's about embracing life as a wholeness and a connection with people that we share common experience and are part of a greater whole. This allows us to feel more connected with people and it also means that when things go wrong, it doesn't damage our self-worth because it's just about us being people and being forgiving and compassionate towards ourselves rather than just letting things go it's understanding that we are human and we are less than perfect when we're self-compassionate we're more likely to have higher self-esteem because we let go of the need to beat ourselves up all the time when we have compassion and understanding for ourselves. With a raised oxytocin level, we're more likely to feel happy, to feel more engaged with other people, to feel better about ourselves and to have more positive thoughts and feelings. Studies have shown that self-compassionate people are less likely to feel bad about themselves when something goes wrong and instead they understand that we are human and everybody messes up at some time and we can learn from it and we can continue and we can improve without having to do a number on ourselves and feel like we're less than or not good enough or not anything, rather that we are humans experiencing life. It's also been shown that self-compassionate people rely less on the opinion of others for their good feeling inside themselves. Self-compassionate people tend to feel better about themselves. So letting ourselves off the hook to give ourselves more peace, less anxiety, less conflict, it sounds like a good thing. Studies have shown that self-compassion 
provides an island of calm, a refuge from the stormy seas of comparison and criticism and negative self-judgment asking, am I good enough? Am I enough? By tapping into our sources of kindness and acknowledging our shared imperfect human condition, we can start to feel more secure, accepted and alive. So how about just for an hour to start with or half an hour? Treat yourself, think about yourself as kindly as you would somebody you love, truly love and forgive and accept and acknowledge. Take even five minutes to watch your thoughts and see what goes on in the monkey mind about yourself. Turn that around and practice having self-compassion, being kind and understanding to yourself and watch the potential to grow, to get that oxytocin level up, that's the love hormone, feeling love for ourselves according to the Buddhists, the compassion will allow us to have that compassion for other people. Thank you so much.